Right, we're back having a look at this Vox AC30 and uh, yes, so I've had a bit more of a look round of this when I just was looking at it through the camera um, when we were just doing an assessment on it. So we've got a replacement for this cap here which is this bad boy here, so F and T, good quality stuff in this as much as we can. 1616 16. that's going to replace this now what it looks to me like they've done is that bracket I think used to be there they've pinched it for that cap and then they put that tag strip on there that wire just fell right off that's feeding the screens as you can see there so they didn't even soldered that on properly this is a hundred microfarad and I think it should be eight 220 microfarad at 100 volts that's this mester here with 470 microfarad instead of 250 so he's being changed he's flopping about in the breeze anyway so we need to tighten that up and then the other thing is this resistor so if you remember this resistor was down onto the chassis and I don't like this resistor I can't see the point in insulating these the legs of this resistor and then these two parts here leaving them exposed so he's gone he's out I've ordered a and I can't find a 25k resistor so I've ordered 20 it might even be 22k on there but I've ordered a 22k resistor to go in there um, that's got to go don't like it you know that's got to be secured enough so it can't be pushed down and uh, to stop these parts here that are exposed touching the chassis I don't want to take that risk so I've swapped that for what it costs that's got to go that's going to be swapped so this bracket which has been harrowed ited onto this capacitor so that's going to be fun and games trying to get that off of there there's the centre tap from the output transformer connected to it if we follow there's a red wire here and if I follow that down it goes to the rectifier too so that's the DC feed so that's uh, that's what's going to happen with that now if we hone down and we look um, we'll just try and zoom in a bit more if we can a bit more light that's when we zoomed in it so it's nice to have a bit more light so these resistors here that you can see are the screen resistors and they are 100 ohms they're what's on the schematic but that is a no-no really they need to be bigger so I think that they should be 1k at least 1k for those and these resistors here are grid stoppers I think at the top of my head yeah pin 2 grid stoppers 1.5k which is I think a higher value is needed in those as well so I would have thought you see 10k on some of those don't you so on, on the L84s and there are half watts as well right so here's the electrolytic that I've taken out 16 16 450 volt working explain that to me why would you do that just when you think you've seen everything you see something that you can't quite believe you know I could understand them clipping off the terminals but to take all that trouble to cover that over why not just change it that's just unbelievable so yeah that is epoxy I think araldytus it's often called as we call it in the uh, in blighty so yes that uh, but anyway that's gone and uh, if we just hone around here we've got the new one in you can see him there where is he there let's go down a bit there he is Right, we're working this power supply gradually on this Vox AC30 and uh, I had a bit of a study of this. 
and now we're going to make this a bit more secure than it was so let's excuse my voice by the way I've got a bit of a cold um, so what I've done I've put a tag strip on there we hone in he's there tag strip on there and a tag strip on there like so and then with what I've done is I fastened um, this resistor across these two tag strips connected on the necessary wires then I've used a piece of uh, 18 gauge uh, wire to fasten onto the uh, capacitor there got the cap fastened to it there and all in all what that's done is is like it connected connected the two uh, tag strips together to make those more secure with the resistor we've got that 18 gauge wire to make that more secure and this isn't even soldered in yet and it's solid there's no way now that that resistor can touch the chassis um, it's got plenty of air around it we've just got silicon this capacitor into there this bracket here is what was holding in um, that botch up capacitor that was they'd put in in, in uh, where they replaced this uh, can cap which they've done very strange things to so we've just got to fasten that there and that's nice and secure and all of that now when it's soldered up will be really secure right that's all soldered up and we've got the ground on there so he's all very secure now now the other thing that I've looked at and I've decided to change this side those three wires into that terminal there that you can see don't worry about that that's where they join that remember we've got to have a look at that later so we've got that there and I've got three wires on there and it looks it just did I just don't it just didn't look tidy on there so what I've decided to do also while I was at it I've decided to um, come off the other side of this tag strip and do what I've done with that 18 gauge wire so I've only got two wires going on there just same as I have here instead of three so I'm going to bring the center tap round and put the center tap on there now the other um, another problem with this is so this wire here is going from the cathode on the uh, rectifier tube and that wire was run all the way down and I'll just get the camera in there so you can see that was run all the way underneath these heat wires so what you've got there is DC and AC together which you always try and avoid if you can because of noise um, don't know how noisy AC 30s are but that to me don't seem like a very thoughtful way of doing it so what I've done I brought the cathode wire over here and if if we look most of these wires these wires here are all DC in fact they're all DC got DC there so it makes I've got the DC there for the screens DC there for the um, for the cathode going to the plates on the tubes and so on so I've moved it out there so that's all DC and we're trying to keep this all AC if we can now the, also these two wires here are the, each side of the output transformer to the plates they're also running as you can see there they're also running over the AC so I'm going to move those um, I'm going to move those and I'm going to come in from this side and keep those all away from the AC that to me just seems a more practical way of doing it when we've done all that I'm going to focus on these um, screen resistors here which are only at 100 ohms and they're, they're, that's not been botched there are 100 ohms on the schematic I think we covered this um, in part one of the video and I'm going to change those and I have got some 1.5k uh, metal film resistors for those I've got four of those now these pitiful uh, sorry these pitiful half watt resistors that we've got there um, said item there are 1.5k they're also too low so I've got some 5.6s that I'm going to put in there and they will be suffice I mean you can see as much as 10k on EL84s for, for grid stoppers um, but I'm going to put these 5.6s on there usually want something 
uh, 3k or above so I'm going to put those I don't want to go, go right up to 10 from 1.5 but 5.6 I think will do for those so we're going to get those now when we've got those done and we've addressed these these wires here uh, just looking at at that just hang on a minute we'll just back the camera out why did you join that wire <laughs> I just suddenly look so this why I never really noticed that until now these wires are coming from there and this is a replacement transformer remember these wires are coming out of here and that's been joined and and they've got the solder work on that that is just total shite man that is shite you can just see that there on that one is the face because the camera's getting in a bit close it might be struggling to focus that is shocking and yet why have you why have you joined it what that reaches i don't understand that <laughs> reaches why 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 go to the trouble of doing that surely you just i don't uh, that just defies all logic and you know if you've got to jo join cables then you've got to join them but when you haven't got to join them you most certainly don't so yeah that i missed that in part one looking down just never that never occurred to me to offer that up nicely it is long enough so that solved that issue um i'm not sure whether the other one is let's just you know the other side the other the yellow cable the, the the other side that's that it does need joining that's not long enough but that one's long enough um, now, oh, that's another thing I forgot. The ground on this on this main electrolytic here has been grounded onto this chassis here, and usually the preamp grounds uh, at some point will be like this preamp grounds on the chassis here. So you normally have on your power supply. Um, you're better off having this going down to your star ground. So I'm going to run a cable. Um, and I'm going to run it down and the star ground is is over the back here You can see where the mains cable. I'm not going to lift it up yet, but see where the mains cable is So I'm going to run that through there right We've uh, done even more on this amp so as you can see here we've changed all these screen and grid um, grid stoppers on there so we've got 1.5k screen resistors 5.6k grid stoppers so they're all sorted out. You can see there. And um, over here, we've, uh, this is all, all soldered up now. We've already done this. Um, now I've got an inline fuse holder here. I just realized that this amp's got no HT. It's quite easy to fit actually. Just use the bottom spade. Uh, Termin spades on the terminal there and then just insulated them so that and I joined those at the top so I've just clipped them and then re them to tidy them up so there we go um, screen cable is uh, sorry earth wire is there that's going down to the um, down to this star where the, where the um, earth is and yes it's pink I know I've run out of black wire and I, need, I want to get this amp done, so I put that pink. To be fair, there's enough array of colours in here. And it'll make that ground easy to identify when anybody's working on it, because this amp is a bit a bit odd, uh, to say the least, the way it's it's laid out. I've tidied up all the wires as much as I, I can. Where I, You pushed all the DC back over here, and now we've got... And I'm trying to keep that well away from the heaters there as well. So the only thing left to do now is, is bias this amp um, and biasing is, is the last thing because we'd have biased it and then changed the screen resistors if it wanted biasing again so it, changing the screen resistors does alter the bias. So all that remains now is to connect that ground onto the, uh, the, the pink ground and uh, we can uh, put the output tubes back in this and fire it up and see if it runs if any if there's any problems right we've connected that ground and uh, we're ready to fire this thing up so I've got a meter here monitoring the uh, HT I've got another meter here monitoring the bias which is just off camera so you can't see it let's uh, begin 
better make sure that the uh, I think the on switch is on so now we've got to wait for that rectifier valve to start conducting so we're getting voltage on the meter that's going up so we just let that well, it's not going up a lot is it it is now beginning to Point draws on the mains is 92 milliamps, so not a lot. Yeah, that's coming up now. That's the meter swearing at me, so I'll just have to switch it off and start it again. There we go. Oh yes, 100 volts. That's coming. That's coming up nicely. conductance yet let's go up to 100 volts on the variac 171 now we've got on the uh, on the HD at 107 volts seems about right I've got no sound at the speak yet let's just go up 20 so that's a, just around about the halfway mark aha the bias the voltage is beginning to creep up and the HT voltage is beginning to drop look and that's because now the preamp valves are conducting and the power amps are starting to conduct as well so that HT voltage now will drop Can hear a bit of sound at the speakers. Tubes are warm. Still continuing to drop the HT now because the, the the amp's conducting. Just going to push it up to 150 volts. So again, that's pushed the HT up now. Yeah, so we've got one 1 1.5 volts on the. Um, on the bias at 200 volts. There's some strange noises. Yeah, by God, we can smell those valves. And we've got 313 volts on the uh, HD, 11.8 volts on the uh, on the bias, which is the drop across that resistor. That's what's that's the voltage. Now I measured that resistor and it was a 53 ohms. It looks rather baked. So we're just going to let this settle for a few minutes. Oh, we have got red plating on one of those um, L84s there. Ooh, that doesn't look good, does it? So I think we'll have to shut that down. Feel that screen resistor. No, that valve is glowing. It is. You could fry an egg on it. Um, I've got 100 ohm resistor in there now. Um, it easily wants double in that. Um, so we're going to fire it up again. Let it run for a while. Just keep an eye on those that tube on the end there. my phone that's doing that yes so 235 volts and now look we've got 323 volts on the HT so we've got we have gained some more HT is that tube red plating? Yes, it is. 
So I think that tube is toast. Right, if we go again, I've put a, a Mazda L84 that I found in there. And that's in place of this chap who uh, appears to be red plating. See the voltage there up to 380 there because I've turned it straight up to 235. See that starting to drop. So we've still got that noise issue. So we know that wasn't that tube. But look how much more HT we've got now. 341. Now we've swapped that tube. So that's quite a lot better. Very often happens though, you you know, you restore the power supply and um, put some decent value screen resistors in and uh, generally it uh, wheedles out a bit of a weak tube. So 339, but that's not cathode to plate remember, that's centre tap to ground. Now that 100 ohm resistor that I've got on there is actually 99.1 ohms. I've got 9.61 volts drop. And also, that interference is my phone, which I'm using for the calculator. So 343. So let's just use, we'll use that plate voltage. It's not accurate, but we, because the thing is, sorry, that's the phone getting in the way again. We're miles out before, so it'll give us a rough idea, and then what we'll do is, when we get in there, that ballpark will. So 9.69, we divide that by 99.1, divide that by four, equals 24 milliamps a tube. Now that's much better. We times that by 341, now we're down to 8 watts so it looks like that tube um, was causing that problem because now we've got quite a low um, we've got quite a, a low a low dissipation that's probably a bit too new we've also got to deduct 5% for the screens as well because it's cathode biased it does seem to be running healthier now right so we'll power down and we'll swap that resist. Right, I've got a 668 ohm wire wound, but it's only uh, three watts, but it'll do for testing purposes. So let's just get an exact reading of it, because of course that's only what it says on the tin. Does it, is it exactly what it says on the tin? 68.5, Mrs. Blinking Sop. So we're gonna put this in and see what that gives us. And we'll go for a bit more of an accurate reading once we get uh, somewhere in the ballpark where we want to be. Right, so we've got 331 on there. And we've got 10.26 or 10.28 volts drop. Three hundred and thirty one point six on the HT ten point three four divide that by the resistance of sixty eight point five. We've now got divide that by four and then times that we'll just times that roughly by that. And we're up to twelve point four five there with that sixty eight in. So it would have so we need to now get an accurate um, um, an accurate uh, plate to cathode voltage because that's not accurate so we've got a plate there and a cathode there 314 you see there so there's 15 volts difference 314.5 so yeah it's three 300 and, so it's, it's 315 volts down in it. 10.3 divided by 68.5 divided 
divide that by 4 times that by 15, 11.84 it, it will be slightly less than that because of the 5% for the screen so you do have to account for that it's not a lot of people do and it's, it's probably minimal but you know that's running somewhere between 11 and 11 and a half watts I think personally that's where it needs to be 50 ohms has probably got it Bob on 12 12 watts right I've now got I've put in an 82 ohm resistor which I found a 5 watt one which is gluing red hot but it's working okay in fact, that seems to be getting hotter than the 3 watt 68. Um, anyway, we've put, got that in there. And I've got 10.195 watts. Um, and that's with a deductive 5% from the screens, for the, for the actual screens of the valves. So 10.1. So I think we might leave it at that. Because this is quite an old amplifier. So that is 85% we're running those at, as opposed to, uh, I normally put cathode bias at 100, but they're at 85%. This is an old amp. So the more dissipation, the more current we draw, the more strain on the transformer. So I think in this case, that's gonna be spawned for this amp, without a doubt. So I think I'm going to solder in that 82 ohm resistor. Right, so we've got our 82 ohm resistor in, which is under there, and our cathode bypass capacitor. And we're just using that to keep it pinned down because we have got some uh, silicon just to hold that in place. So that's done. And that's it. This amp now, <coughs> this section of the amplifier is now completed. So let's just have a recap of, of what we've done. If we'll start from this end. So if you remember, we had that 100 uh, microfarad cap bodged on there and we've removed that. We've put the 30 microfarad. We've got a new tag strip in there. Um, the 250, uh, sorry, 220K resistor, which is brand new uh, to the other tag strip. And then we've wired in this electrolytic capacitor using this tag strip, much stabler way of doing it. We've added an inline fuse in there we've done that and let's go over to this section so if we look what we've done here we've changed the 100 ohm screen resistors and now we've got 1.5k uh, which will make the amp run better and the valves will last a hell of a lot longer we've got 5.6k grid stoppers we had what did we have 1.5k and those were half what not that that matters on the grids but I don't like to see those in vintage amps when any guitar amp really so that's that and then we move this grand wire which is just we here and that runs all the way along the back there goes through down to the uh, star ground to the where the earth is um although we may have to alter that because we have got some ground issues on this amp by the sounds of it it's very noisy but the main thing we did speaking of noises we moved all the dc by using these tag strips enables us to move all the dc away from all the ac remember we'd got we got the plate wires running under the under the eater wires and ac and dc equals noise so that uh, that pretty much wraps this section up the next in this will end it for part two and part three we'll be looking at this uh, at the preamp sections of this amplifier now there is a lot of problems with this amp um still a lot of things still to sort out the vibratrem channel doesn't work um there's uh haraldite on one of the valves uh valve sockets so that's got to be changed um copious amounts of components have been changed in in those sections in those preamp sections and if what we've seen in this section is anything to go by we could have as work cut out but that'll do it for part two so thanks for watching uh, you all take care and i'll see you all in a future video bye bye for now